Welcome fellow bookworms to Tiver's Den. My name is Whitney and today we have my November wrap up. Um, yeah, today when I'm filming this, it's December 1st, so I've just started my 24 days of bookmas and this video will be going up today as well. Um, and so yeah, I'm really excited to start off the month, but of course we need to do our wrap up. Now, I did not have a very good month reading wise in November. I was really, really busy with a lot of different things uh, and just reading kind of took a back burner and I'm not upset about that because I had a really big month in October. December was already very ambitious and I'm just piling more things on top of it. So uh, I'm gonna have a big month in December as well. So it was kind of nice to just take my time with my reads in November and focus on other things that I needed to get done, not just reading. Um, I, you know, November we had some yearly appointments. We revamped some of the, the bookshelves and I rearranged the, the den. Um, I had a dog training client reach out to me, an old dog training client. So I'll be working with them. I met with them and then they sent somebody else my way. So I met with them as well. Um, and just getting ready for the holidays, getting presents and such. Just, just a busy month overall. Uh, so yeah, reading kind of took a little bit of a back burner and I just took my time with it. And so some of these books are going to be rolling over into December and into January because like I said, my December TBR is already ambitious, so I can't roll over all the ones I want to. And then unfortunately two of them are going to go back on the shelf. Uh, I generally don't like to do that. Like, to me, it seems kind of counterintuitive to, you know, put a book on a TBR and then they constantly, any books you don't finish, just go back on the shelf. Um, and sometimes that happens multiple times. Um, to me, the whole purpose of creating TBR is to get these books read. So if I don't get them read in the month that I'm trying to, I like to roll them over so I can still check them off my TBR. But the two were kind of, well, one was a last minute edition because I just thought it worked for nonfiction November and the other one, um, it's just really dense. It's one of the ones I'm most excited for because the content is something I'm really interested in, but it's just really dense and I had other things I needed to prioritize. So let's go ahead and get into my wrap up and what I did get accomplished, um, and then we'll talk about the books that are rolling over and what is going back on my shelf and such. So we'll start with the audiobooks because I always forget audiobooks and library books because I don't have them physically. So we'll start there so I don't forget them. So first up, I listened to Beyond the One by Tom Felton, and I listened to it via audio, of course. And it was really, really enjoyable. I do want to get a physical copy because I've heard there's pictures in there. And so I think that would be really fun. But the audio is fantastic. He narrates it. And he's just funny. He has a sense of humor and it really comes through in the audiobook for sure. And so I really, really enjoyed it. And it's not all Harry Potter themed. Um, it really starts, you know, when he's younger and then his early acting gigs and then his, you know, time at Harry Potter into present day and such. Um, and I don't know, it's just, it was so enjoyable and it was funny getting his perspective because he's just a kid, you know, doing these movies with some big name actors and actresses um, and he has no, no concept of that. And so some of the things he did was just really humorous for sure. But that one was really good. If you have any interest in it, I say definitely, definitely get it. Um, I would say try to have a physical copy and listen to the audiobook because I think that would be like the perfect experience for it. The other audiobook I listened to was Mean Baby by Selma Blair. Now, Selma Blair isn't like an actress I knew a lot about or anything like that, but she was in several movies that I really enjoyed, you know, like Legally Blonde and Cruel Intentions and such. Um, and she's been kind of more present recently, um, talking about MS and her struggles with that and such. So I was interested in reading that because of, you know, her presence more recently, not necessarily because she been in movies I like. Um, that being said, 
it was okay, but I really didn't start enjoying it until the ending when she was talking more about MS and such and how that was affecting her life. Um, just because earlier on, like, she started drinking at a really young age, and some of the things she did was very, very toxic. I will say there's trigger warnings for this one. Um, definitely look those up because there's several, you know, from drug abuse or alcoholism and such. She does talk about drugs a little bit as well. Um, and then, you know, her being raped, um, as well is in there. So definitely keep that in mind if you're going to be reading it. Um, because I wasn't prepared for it. It wasn't that triggering for me. But it just kind of took me by surprise because I, I just, I wasn't expecting it, I guess. But, um, so yeah, that is, that one, like I said, didn't enjoy it all that much. Um, I didn't not like it, but it was just kind of just meh for me. It's just something I was listening to until the end and that really caught my interest for sure. So there's that one. And then the library book was Ace of Spades by, uh, Farida Ab Abake. Yimide. I'm probably mispronouncing that. I've looked it up, but my brain just, that's how my brain works. It has trouble processing pronunciations. So, um, that one, like I said, I got from the library and I wanted to enjoy it. I just didn't. And I think because it was heavily inspired by Gossip Girl and Pretty Little Liars, which even in the author note, she talks about that. I think that's what kind of ruined it for me because I was never able to get into those shows. I found them really superficial and I don't know. I just, I never enjoyed those shows. I really wanted to. <laughs> I liked the idea of them, but I just never got into them. And so I think that's kind of what ruined it for me because I like the premise and I like the social commentary that was in there, but just that. Gossip Girl, Pretty Little Liars feel. It was just like, uh, it just gets under my skin. Um, and so I did not really enjoy that one, but I can see why people do. Because a lot of people like Gossip Girl and a lot of people like Pretty Little Liars. But yeah, this book just wasn't for me, unfortunately. Um, and now we're into our physical books. So first, I did finish Dunked in Wood by William Horwood. This book Boy, my husband got it last year for my 25 days of book miss and he kind of got it as a joke because he thought the moles were funny um I ended up really really loving this book uh it's still kind of sticking with me like I still find myself my mind wandering to these moles um, so you basically have this Duncan system of moles and it mainly follows Bracken and Rebecca and kind of their role, um, kind of their destiny and then the history. Um, it basically reads like an oral history of the system, but mainly following them and kind of their role in the overall destiny of the system as well. So I became so invested in these moles and I was made me cry multiple times. Like, I love this book. If you like animal main characters, if you like kind of um, an epic, like, history, love story, kind of questy, academic, like, it hits a lot of different spots, um, uh, this is definitely a book to pick up. It's got good ratings on Goodreads, but I think it's, you know, kind of just, an underappreciated book for sure. So really, really good. I'm searching for the other two. Um, I've been able to find them, but the problem is the second one I can only find in paperback unless I get it shipped from, you know, a different country, which I don't necessarily want to do that. So uh, I might just have to pick up the paperback. Normally I don't care if my book's don't match like that doesn't bother me but for some reason I just really want the hardbacks in these books so anyway highly recommend loved it um 
the next book I also really, really enjoyed and was not expecting to at all. So this is a non-fiction. It's The Lost Book of Moses, The Hunt for the World's Oldest Bible. This is by Channon Tagay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was mispronouncing his name before. I think it was pronouncing it Shannon. Uh, and it's, I'm, I think I was mispronouncing it. So anyway, this one is basically biblical archaeology. Um, and I thought I would kind of find it interesting, but I wasn't for sure. And Channon is a journalist. And so um, after the Dead Sea Scrolls came out, there was this guy in the late 1800s, Moses Wilhelm Shapira, and he had found some scrolls and tried to sell them to the British Museum and then got denounced as a fraud and basically ended up dead six months later and his scrolls disappeared. Well, when the Dead Sea Scrolls came about and came out, people started taking an interest in Shapira again and wondering if his scrolls might have been legit what happened to his scrolls, um, and kind of whether they were real or whether they were fraudulent. And so Channon went on this kind of quest to figure out what happened um, to the scrolls and looking for clues whether they were legit uh, and such. So really, really interesting. Like I said, I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. And at points, it really reads like a fiction, like, and I was so invested in this, and the ending just, <laughs> I was just not, <laughs> I should have seen it coming, but I didn't see it coming, like, so well written. Um, and yeah, it's just really, really interesting, because it kind of goes into a little bit of the science and the history behind, like, the biblical text and such, um, and just... I found this really, really interesting and really engaging. Um, so yeah, really, really cool book. Uh, the other one, which is why I like doing the ABC Author Challenge, because this is a book I never would have picked up. Um, and I like having that thrifting element to it, because it's easy you know, just go look and find something you're interested in doing an ABC challenge. But with this one, you know, with my challenge, I go thrifting and try to find these books. And so I would have missed out on this book. I would have never picked up this book otherwise, which, yeah. Anyway, the next one I read was Exodus Revisited by Leon Uris, uh, which was really, really good to read right after The Lost Book of Moses because some of the areas um, and some of the history that is touched on in the very beginning of this book, the rest of it is more about present political strife and such, but the very, very beginning of the book does touch a little bit on the history and like I said some of the areas are the same and so this is mainly pictures um so a lot of pictures and then just little notes by Leon Uris and the photographer is I'm probably gonna butcher this name I'm so sorry Demetrios Harris Harris um so you can see it there he was the photographer and so, yeah, he took the pictures and then Leon just did commentary. And what was kind of cool is, like, some of the darker points, um, the pages are black. So I thought that was really, really cool. Now, I will say there is trigger warnings. Some of the pages fell out, which is no good. But there is trigger warnings for um, both of these books, Lost Book of Moses uh, and this one. Um, you know, suicide and, um, this one, you know, just how the Jewish people were treated and such. So keep that in mind if you're going to be reading either one of these. Um, so yeah, there's that one. The next one I did not enjoy, but it was nice and short and simple. This is It's All Mental by Marcel Vertes. This one is a spoof on psychoanalysis, and I just didn't get it. It's a lot of one lines and pictures, so you kind of have to interpret it yourself. Um, so, yeah, I did not get it. The only one that I kind of got and I thought was funny was it says, You mean to tell me that if Van Gogh had been psychoanalyzed, he wouldn't have cut off his ear? 
And the response is, of course he would, but he would have known why. <laughs> and I thought that part was funny. Um, but the rest of it, like I said, it just, I didn't get it. It, I didn't, I, I it was over my head. Um, so there's that. The last book I actually finished was The Monster of St. Marylebone by Wayne Worcester. This one is basically um, Sherlock Holmes inspired. And I liked how it tied in to Sherlock Holmes by Arthur, Arthur Conan Doyle. I thought that was really clever because basically in the beginning you have these documents, these pages from Watson's diary that were found and there's a letter explaining that some of the cases were too dark. Um, and so he had them, he had uh, Arthur Conan Doyle not print them um, because they were just, they were too dark to share. But now somebody found his, the pages of the, the, his diary talking about this case. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was really interesting. I really, really enjoyed this one. <laughs> Don't come for me. I've never actually read any of the Sherlock Holmes stories by Arthur Conan Doyle. I've never read them, but I've seen movies. Um, and I thought the voice of this book felt very Sherlock Holmesy for sure. Uh, but I can't say that with 100% certainty since I've never actually read the books, but I thought the voice and the tone of this really, really fit just based on the movies I've seen and such. So those are the ones I have finished. Now, I did start this one. Um, it's A Case of Two Cities by a Chu Chow uh, Zyolong. And I had to, I looked up how to pronounce this too, and it just I struggled because I see the Q, but from what I could find, because I had to look up some of the names in the book too, Q is pronounced Ch. So I I I it's a struggle bus. I am enjoying this one. So this is basically a detective novel. There's a corruption case. Um, there's been one murder so far. Uh, and it's a tale of two cities, or a case of two cities, because he's going from Shanghai, and now he, where I'm at, he's headed to the U.S. as well. Uh, I am struggling a little bit with this one. I'm enjoying the story. I like the story, the premise, everything. I'm struggling with it a little bit because it's very political, but it's Chinese politics. And it's just not something I'm familiar with. Um, and so I am struggling with that part of it a little bit. And then also he uses a lot of proverbs, like even the characters speak in proverbs as well. Um, so he uses a lot of that. And <laughs> um, and then there's also a lot of poetry because the main character is a poetry writer as well as a cop. Uh, so the political system is a little bit of a struggle for me, and then the proverbs and the poetry are a little bit of a struggle as well. Not quite halfway through it yet, um, but this one is going to be rolling over in December, so definitely going to be finishing this one up. I read 114 pages, and there's like 307, so this one will roll over, and I will complete that one. Then the next two are also ABC author challenge books, which is, like I said, one of my 2022 goals. Um, and so I really want to get these read. So we have Eve by W.M. Paul Young. Uh, and so this one actually will work for um, December for sure. Uh, and so it says, On a mysterious island between our world and the next, a young woman watches the shore broken and barely alive. John, the kind collector, finds her enlisted to the aid of healers and scholars, and they do soon discover that her genetic code links her to every known race. No one would guess what her survival will mean to all of humankind. No one but Eve, mother of the living. So, um, I think this will work for December. 
And it's not too long. It's like 200, like just shy of 300 pages. So, um, so not too bad. 296 pages. Uh, so yeah, we'll hopefully get that one added in there as well. And then the last one is Who is the River by Paul Zalis, Getting Lost and Found in the Amazon and Other Places. Uh, so this is basically his travel um, and their month-long trip, boat trip into the Amazon River Basin. Uh, and their guide always says, instead of where, he says, who is the river? Um, and so, yeah. I think this one will be an interesting one. This is, of course, my Z author. So this will complete the ABC author challenge. But, well, hopefully roll these three into December um, and get them read. Because, like I said, December was already ambitious. And now I'm going to be adding those in. I'm hoping to read those on the days that I have the shorter books. But some of the longer books from the 24 Days of Bookmas books will also need to be continued on the days that I read the shorter books. So, so those are the ones that are rolling over into December for January rollovers. Um, I have still the two, the next two in the Circle Trilogy. I read the first one in October. Um, and so these ones are actually rollovers from October. And now they're going to jump from December and roll over into January. But I still want to finish this trilogy. The atmosphere of this one is one of my favorites from her different series. Um, and so we have Dance of the Gods and Valley of Silence and Morgan's Cross was the one I read in October. So these will be going on January's TBR right away so I can finish up that series. And then I really had wanted to get to this one in November. And since hauling it and putting it on my November TBR... Um, I forget the channel, but I'll, I'll leave it linked down below and I'll put the name here. But they mentioned they had read this and thought it was really, really good. So that made me even more excited to get to it. And I just, I wasn't able to. So obviously not going to be able to fit it in on December, but this one will be going on January's TBR as well because I want to read this desperately. The other one is one I have been wanting to pick up for so long because I have a project in mind for this. And again, unfortunately, and it's not that long, but unfortunately, I just wasn't able to to get to it in November. So this is Lessons from Lucy by Dave Barry. This was gifted to me by Kelly. She did a giveaway, um, but Kelly at Books I'm Not Reading. And yeah, it's been sitting here for months and I've been wanting to get to it. Um, but with that project added on with it, you know, I obviously need to have some time. So this is going to be a priority in January for sure because I don't want it to wait anymore. So again, I really hope my first round of my game is nice to me and I'm able to maybe put some of these officially on, you know, prompts from the game. So there's that one. And then the last two I'm not going to be able to get to at all. Um, so they're just going to go back onto my shelf. So the first one I kind of added in last minute because I was just thinking, oh, no, I'm fiction November. Like, this will work perfect. And I've had it for a while. My grandma gave it to me, you know, for it's been a, it's been a while. So uh, at least a couple of years. And that's Troublemaker by Leah Remini. Um so this is just going to go back on my shelf. Like I said, I kind of added it in last minute anyway. I just didn't get to it. So unfortunately, that will go back onto the shelf. And then the other one is one I'm so excited for. Um, but it is really dense. And that is Spillover by David Quammen. Uh, Animal Infections and the Next Human Pandemic. Uh, so it's just basically zoological like diseases and such. And uh, yeah, definitely... A topic I'm really interested in right in my wheelhouse this is one I'm so 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 excited for and I'm just gonna have to put it off so it's got a little dust on the back um I actually got this when I was looking for a Q author for my ABC author challenge but I got a different Q author because this one was dense um but I thought ooh, I'm really interested in reading that so this one I am gonna try to prioritize in 2023 um but for now it's gonna go back on the shelf and I did start to read it a little bit um but quickly realized it's one I'm gonna have to invest some time in so that is 
what we have. Um, total I read, and this includes the what the page count would have been for the audiobooks because I like to include that. Um, so it would have. What I completed was 2,341 pages. That does include the partial page count for A Case of Two Cities. Um, and then, sorry, <laughs> shaking the camera. Uh, and then in December, I'll just include the partial page count again. Um, and so 2,341 pages. I put eight and a half books because I was almost to the halfway point on A Case of Two Cities. And then audio, I've listened to 16 hours and 19 minutes of audio. So, um, not my greatest month, month by any means, but I read a lot of great books. Uh, and it was nice kind of stepping back a little bit and focusing on other things as well. But that being said, we are now in December and I am so excited for my 25 Days of Bookmas and the other reads I have going on. Um, hopefully I'm able to to work them in fairly well um, to the 24 Days of Bookmas uh, or that last week of the month I'm able to knock out a lot. We shall see. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Let me know if you've read any of these or if any of these you think you're interested in reading down in the comments below and let me know what your most anticipated read is for December, whether it's a Christmas read and you celebrate Christmas or if you don't celebrate, just what your most anticipated read is in general. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you here. Happy reading, everyone. Bye.